Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you a new product review video. Uh, for this week, we are looking at the Zimmy Smart Zigbee three button switch. Now, I've done the Wi Fi version of this uh, switch before and it works great. If you want to check out that video, check right here. Otherwise, stick around and let's see what we can come up with. So, the great folks over at Zimmy Smart sent over this switch. And since I've done some other Zigbee stuff lately, uh, including the Tuya Zigbee Gateway, I thought it'd be cool to check this switch out and see if we couldn't get it working uh, with all the various things as well. So on their website, as you can see, it's a little over $29 uh, to purchase uh, this switch. So not too bad. Uh, you'll be able to control three different devices with it. And obviously it's a single gain uh, wall plate. So you'll have the ability uh, to control three devices uh, from one central location. Let's check it out. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, available on AliExpress as well. Pretty much the same price. I wasn't able to find it on Amazon, so I'm not sure if it's currently uh, for sale on the Amazon website, but I thought your best option is probably just to get it straight from ZimmySpot. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So of course for starters, we will uh, unbox the device. Uh, once we do that, we'll kind of go through installing the switch in the wall. Once that's done, I thought we would try to get it added to the uh, Tuya Zigbee Gateway and the Tuya app. Uh, once we do that, of course, I prefer the SmartThings integration, so I'm going to attempt to add it into SmartThings as well. Uh, so we'll rem we would remove it from the Zigbee Gateway and add it into the uh, SmartThings app that way. Once we do that, then of course we'll add it into Home Assistant. And lastly, I'll show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. So uh, here it is, uh, the box that it comes in. Of course, it's a smart wall switch. It's got the three buttons shown there in the picture. Uh, let's see, once we open up the box, it's got the instructions in there. It's a pretty standard. Um, Zigbee switch. It requires the neutral on the ground, of course, and then it has the uh, it has the spot for the power in, and then of course load out to three different devices, uh, depending on how you want to get this set up. Uh, in order to mount it onto the wall, you'll pop this little front piece off here, and it will uh, then uh, give you access to the screw holes, uh, which will allow you to mount it to the uh, wall box. That's pretty much it for unboxing the device. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so I don't have a lot of single gang uh, wall plates around my house. Most of my rooms all have multiple switches uh, tied to them at each location. Uh, so it's hard for me to find a good spot to put this switch. As much as I like the idea of being able to control three different devices from one location, it's not easy to add this into a, a dual or three gang wall plate already. Uh, it's a special single gang wall plate that it comes with. And if you were gonna to try to add it into anything else, it's gonna probably require some sort of 3D printing uh, of a wall plate to get it to fit properly. Because of that, I tried to find a spot in my house that had a single gang switch that I could add this into. So what you see here is a, uh, a wall plate in my living room that currently only controls a fireplace vent. So basically it's designed for when, when you're burning uh, wood in the fireplace, you can turn the switch on and it'll help circulate that heat from the fireplace around the room. It's in a central location in my living room, which gives me the idea that if I put this switch here with these three buttons, one of them is going to control the vent, and then I'm going to set up the other two switches to control other things in my room that are already smart. 
uh, one being my living room lights and the other one being my living room fan. Both of them are already connected to smart devices, so it makes them easy to turn them on and off from anywhere using automations in Home Assistant. So here is the uh, switch pulled away from the wall. Since only one of the switches is actually going to be connected to anything, it makes it kind of easy to plug all this up. So basically I'm going to set the fireplace vent to be the third load of the switch, so that third button down at the bottom. The other two switches I'm going to leave empty and I'll just set up automations to control them uh, within Home Assistant. So I've got it all wired up and I turn my breaker back on just to make sure that everything is going to work correctly. I'll go ahead and push this third button down at the bottom and you should be able to hear the vent come on. Looks like everything is working good so I should be able to shut the power back off. Go ahead and get this fully mounted into the wall and then of course we'll turn the breaker back on. And of course as you can see here I've got it mounted into the wall fully. It looks like I'm going to need to do a little bit of patchwork over on the side uh, to cover up it looks like a little gash or a tear of the paint that was there from the previous wall plate. Other than that, I think we are good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so I want to get it added into the Tuya Zigbee Gateway. We did this with the uh, Zigbee button that I had recently, and so I thought it'd be cool to try to get this one added into the Tuya Zigbee Gateway as well. Uh, on the instructions that came with the switch, it didn't mention the Zigbee Gateway at all, which I was kind of surprised about. It does mention Smart Things and Philips Hue, so we have some other options there if this doesn't work. Basically, follow the directions. You're going to want to put it in pairing mode if it's not already in pairing mode by default. Uh, if you hold the button down for 10 to 15 seconds, you'll see the lights start to blink and you'll know that the switch is ready to go. Uh, we'll give it a few minutes here to see if we can get it picked up by uh, the Tuya app here. And I'll kind of fast forward through this, but basically I waited around for quite a while and I was never able to get the Tuya app to pick up the device. I'm not really sure why, and I'll have to reach out to my Zimmy Smart rep to find out if this is actually compatible with the Tuya Zigbee Gateway. Nonetheless, I'm okay with that because I really wanted to get it added into SmartThings anyway, which is my primary uh, hub for Zigbee devices around my house. So I'm ready to move on to the next step and give that a shot. All right, based on the instructions that came with the Zigbee switch, we have to uh, set up a custom device handler for this switch to work properly with SmartThings. So we're gonna go over to GitHub. Uh, you can do a search at the top of GitHub for Zimmy Smart. You're gonna click on users at that point, and then you're gonna look for the Zigbee section, and then you wanna copy the code from the Zimmy Smart Zigbee button. At this point, we can jump over to the SmartThings IDE. Uh, we'll go to the Device Handlers section. We're going to click on Create Device Handler. You'll say From Code, and then you're going to paste in that code that you just copied earlier. Once you hit Publish and Save, then we're ready to jump over to our app and see if we can't get the device added into SmartThings. All right, unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure what happened but the devices already showed up in SmartThings when I pulled up the app. I don't know if I did it by accident or, or what. It was really kind of strange. Nonetheless, it's picked up the three buttons, and now I can name them and should be able to start controlling them within SmartThings. So the first one is going to be the living room light switch. Then, of course, the second one, I'm going to call it the living room fan switch. And the third one is going to be the living room FP vent. And I'll refresh smart things here to show you that the names did get updated correctly. They're all three listed correctly, so we should be good to go. All right, so for the devices to show up in Home Assistant, uh, I already used the smart things integration. Now it will automatically pick up those switches eventually, uh, but if I want to speed up the uh, turnaround on that, I can go ahead and restart Home Assistant so it will go out to SmartThings and pull in the latest information. 
And as you can see in Home Assistant, in the SmartThings integration now, we have the three new uh, switches that we just put in. The living room light switch, the living room fan switch, and of course our fireplace vent. Now if you remember correctly, only the third switch, which is our fireplace vent, is the one that currently is connected to anything. So we need to create automations for the first two buttons so that they will control the devices that we want. And that's what we're going to do here. So from the command line, I'm going to edit my switch automations.yaml file here. Uh, let's see, for the ID, it's going to be living room fan switch. Alias is going to be pretty much the same. We're going to say living room fan switch there as well. Uh, we'll set the initial state to on. Uh, now under trigger, the platform is going to be state. Uh, the entity ID for that will be switch.livingroom underscore fan underscore switch. That's the new one that we just created. For the action, uh, the service is going to be switch.toggle. And then under data, our entity ID for that will be switch.lr underscore fan underscore power. Basically, what this automation is saying is that if that living room fan switch button is pushed, it's going to toggle the living room fan power. Since we don't really care about the state of this switch in particular, all we want it to do is whatever state the, uh, the fan is in, it's going to toggle it on or off. We're basically going to do the same thing for our living room light switch as well. So for the ID, it's going to be living room underscore light underscore switch. We'll set the alias to be the same thing as well. For the initial state, it's going to be on. Uh, again, under trigger, the platform is going to be state, and the entity ID will be switch.livingroom underscore light underscore switch. Uh, for the action, the service is going to be light.toggle, and then under data, our entity ID for that will be light.livingroom underscore lights. Once we have all that in there, we can go ahead and save it. And then we're going to jump over to the web interface and do a check config, make sure everything comes up clean. And then we just need to do a reload automations uh, for it to pick up the new automations that we just set up. Once all that's done and ready to go, we're going to move on to that last step. All right, so I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this, but we're gonna try it anyway. So here is the three buttons again. Uh, if I press the top button, you can kind of just see from the reflection that the lights did come on in the room. If I press that button again, of course it gets dark again and the lights have gone back off. Um, for the fan, which is the middle button here, we're gonna push that button. And I'll just kind of jump over there and show you. The fan was on. And it is now slowing down, so the fan is currently going off. That's pretty much it, guys. We have uh, set up this Zigbee switch in SmartThings, uh, partly because we couldn't get it configured uh, with the Tuya Zigbee gateway. Uh, the other reason, uh, I prefer SmartThings anyway, so I'm okay with that. I will follow up with my Zimmy Smart rep and I will update uh, in the description what I hear back from them on the Tuya Zigbee gateway. But for 30 bucks, you can control three devices. I think it's worth a shot. Definitely check out Zimmy Smart's website uh, for all of their other products. They have tons of smart gear out there and they're putting new stuff out all the time. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. Of course, for starters, we unboxed the device. Uh, once we were done with that, we installed the switch in the wall. Uh, after that, we tried to get it added into the 2U Zigbee gateway. It didn't really work. So then we tried to add it into SmartThings, which did work. Uh, once that was done, of course, we showed how it was integrated into Home Assistant. And lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. Again, that's the end of the video, guys. I probably like the Wi-Fi version a little bit better than the Zigbee version, mainly because with the Wi-Fi version, we can get it set up with Tasmoda custom firmware, which I thought worked out really well. But because this device integrates with SmartThings and so many of my other Zigbee and ZUA devices communicate with SmartThings, I'm good with that as well.
I want to thank everybody uh, that has donated to my Buy Me a Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, check out my Teespring merchandise page uh, for all your BHA or Burns Home Automation merchandise. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.